What are some reasons why asthma patients fail to respond to current standard of care therapy with inhaled medications? When we approach a patient who doesn't seem to be doing as well as we would have expected, there's a number of issues we need to look at, starting with the basics. Number one, are they using the medication that we prescribed, and are they using it correctly? Failure to adhere to these medications and to use them appropriately very often ends in very bad outcomes. So one thing to keep in mind is that the patient is using their medicine, and you should always observe their inhaler technique to ensure that they're doing it properly. We have to always consider other comorbidities, things like gastroesophageal reflux disease or rampant chronic sinusitis where the patient's chronically infected before we can control their disease. Um, there are certain patients, however, despite looking at the use of their medications, which happen to be correct, and the absence of comorbidities, will continue to have problems. And these are the patients that have a form of asthma that's resistant to the current standard of care therapies. Why is it important to tailor individual therapy to a patient's phenotype? By using biomarkers and identifying a patient's inflammatory phenotype, it gives us a much better probability of success with the therapy that we're about to choose. For example, if a patient was referred to me with very severe asthma and we're failing inhaled corticosteroid therapy and I obtained an exhaled nitric oxide and found that the level was 10, then in all likelihood this patient was being treated for a non-type 2 form of asthma with a drug that had a low probability of working. And in that particular situation, um, it would be difficult because we have very few drugs now that are specific for that phenotype. But conversely, let's say the patient had a blood eosinophil count of 500 and an exhaled nitric oxide level of 32, and the patient was compliant with their inhaled corticosteroids, then what I could surmise is that the patient probably had some form of resistance to that therapy for a number of possible reasons. And in that situation, if their disease were se severe enough, we would consider the use of a biologic. And in all likelihood, because of the high eosinophil count, probably an anti-IL-5 drug. Can you provide an example of an inflammatory biomarker? Which inflammatory markers have you used to predict responsiveness to therapies when developing individual treatment plans? A good example of an inflammatory biomarker is the bloody eosinophil count. Um, a second one which is frequently used in practice is the exhaled nitric oxide. Where I tend to use biomarkers are not necessarily in patients who come to the office with mild to moderate disease or even a patient with severe disease who is responding to standard of care inhaled medical therapy like inhaled corticosteroids plus long acting beta agonists. Where I'm going to employ these biomarkers is in a patient who is either escalating the level of their disease severity or they are referred to me as a patient who has not responded to standard therapy. And what I'd be most inclined to be using would be a blood eosinophil count, as I mentioned, and an exhaled nitric oxide. If neither of those is revealing, I may then resort to getting a sputum eosinophil count, understanding, however, that it's more difficult to obtain and more difficult to interpret. What are some key features of late onset severe asthma? Late onset severe asthma frequently occurs much later than patients who have typical uh, allergic asthma, which begins in childhood. Patients may begin their disease with a severe bronchial infections or sinus infection, and for the first time in their life have significant wheezing or a respiratory disability. These patients frequently have concomitant nasal polyposis and chronic rhinosinusitis. They may or may not be sensitive to aspirin. Their pulmonary function is very often low from the very time of diagnosis of the disease. And finally, they're noted to have marked blood or sputum eosinophilia. Are there any good biomarkers to identify non-type 2 asthma? There are not many good biomarkers for patients with non-type 2 asthma. A certain percentage of patients who are non-type 2 will have an elevation of the sputum neutrophil count to above 60% of cells on a sputum sample. But more so, non-type 2 is defined by what it isn't than by what it is. These patients typically don't have sputum or blood eosinophils. They have a low exhaled nitric oxide. And as far as we understand, they don't have the presence of cytokines, interleukins 4, 5, and 13.